It's been two whole years since I made a video about the retro console war brewing between two companies that haven't made a legitimate console in decades. The Intellivision Amico from Intellivision and the Atari VCS from Atari. And in those two years, I've thought about making a new video because the old video still gets views and it's a little bit out of date, so why not make a follow up? So this is Atari VCS versus Intellivision Amico round two. So let's start out with the release dates. The Atari VCS was supposed to launch in July of 2019, and as the recording of this video, it's currently in my hands. I have tried to write this episode over those past two years, and the target date for the VCS was always in limbo, and now that it's actually in backers' hands, it seems a little bit more legit. And while the Atari VCS hasn't technically hit retail shelves yet, they do have a target of spring of this year, 2021. Now, that could change at any time, but the fact that it's actually in the hands of people who backed it, and not just influencers, is a plus in my book. The Intellivision, on the other hand, was supposed to come out in October of 2020, but was pushed back due to a little worldwide event known as COVID-19. And after the announcement of the delay, Tommy did promise a release date of April 3rd to founders and April 15th to everybody else. However, Tommy recently just mentioned offhand during a live stream that there's a 20% chance of hitting that date. The official site still makes no mention of this delay and lists the official release date of 4-15-2021, but that 20% chance probably means that we should expect a second delay for the Amico. And I really hope not because April is so close, it's my birthday month, but again, as the recording of this video, there hasn't been any confirmation or denial of a delay. So I guess I, we can call it a tie with a slight edge to Atari for officially being real, but the Amico has only had one delay so far, so it's neck and neck. So let's talk about social media presence. Is there really any competition here? I mean, of course, the Intellivision headed by Tommy Tallarico is way ahead in this category. Tommy has been all over the place talking about the Intellivision and answering questions that anybody has had about the system, good or bad. And when I made this first video, he was one of the first ones to comment on it, and he's even sat down with an interview with me. And being aggressive to call out inaccuracies in YouTuber videos is really important, especially among the larger ones, because public perception can change so much even on a misunderstanding. However, it would probably be easier for Tommy just to have a blog of all of his appearances and what he says about the Amico for people to refer to so that misunderstandings don't happen in the first place. While I was doing research for this video, there were several different sources of information, all from Tommy himself, that I had to sift through in order to make a semi-informed video, which honestly, I really shouldn't have to dig that hard. Now, compared to Tommy and the Amico, the Atari VCS has had a way different approach. They're more traditional, talking with tech blogs and going to tech shows like CES. And they were very dormant for the most part leading up to the release of the Atari VCS. Sometimes they would share updates on their Indiegogo page or Medium and then on Twitter or through email. And I follow them through the Medium blog and the Indiegogo page, but I didn't find out about the Atari VCS shipping until I heard about it on a podcast who sourced their Twitter. But now that the system is out, they're a bit more active on social media, sharing press about the VCS and fan photos of the system. They definitely aren't as accessible as Tommy is though. To get my interview with Tommy, I just shot him a DM on Twitter and he set up a time to chat. But the VCS has their channel outreach done through a third party, which I was actually unaware of until their official YouTube channel commented on my video and suggested that I reach out that way. And since I gave my information to them, I haven't really had any outreach whatsoever, and it's been about three weeks. So the winner in this route is Tommy. I mean, the Amico. Now let's talk about public perception, and it's no doubt that public perception has really played a role in the rollout of the Atari VCS and the Intellivision Amico, and it's really interesting to see how people react to the press about each console. The Atari VCS was lampooned by gamer YouTube from its inception as the Atari box, mainly due to Atari's track record 
prior to the Atari VCS. And that very harsh criticism continued due to Atari's initial handling of that criticism. Calling a YouTube channel, especially a large one, fake news when approached for comment on their Facebook page really turned people off. And they were also very transparent about their shortcomings, which is good for the consumer, but a lot of critics of the system took it to mean that the project was doomed from the start. Even now that the system is out and in people's hands, there are still people who call this thing a scam and the best comments that a larger channel like Spawn Wave and Kevin Kenson can muster is, well, it's better than I expected and it works citing that the value of the system comes from putting windows on it and making it into an emulation machine rather than the OS themselves and even then they stopped short of recommending it to people who are looking to buy it when it hits store shelves. But still, there are a lot of people who are interested in the Atari VCS, and it really does look like the main fault of the Atari VCS is the marketing. Initially selling it as a console has really stunted its potential as a niche product among enthusiasts who want a microcomputer that doesn't look like a traditional computer. And people who comment on my videos, they don't know much about it either. They scoff that it has games that you can get on Steam. But a lot of people who were on the fence about the Atari VCS who watched my video all the way through, they now consider buying one now that they know its full potential. Once it goes on clearance, of course. Now the Amico, on the other hand, has said, a pretty much overall positive reception despite also not having a public prototype from the very start. And sure, people have played the system behind closed doors and they've said it's pretty good, but then you have very skeptical YouTubers who suddenly changed their tune, and I wonder why. Well, you guessed it, Tommy Tallarico, and he's really the main reason why the Amico has had such a positive reception, despite sharing a lot of similarities with the VCS in terms of product timelines. Anyone who's been a critical of the Amico initially has been approached by Tommy, and of those approached, most have completely changed their tunes from critics to fanboys, or at least took pause to make sure that they accentuate their points better or not even cover the console in the future. And then you have the people who are just not having any of the Amico and have actually doubled down on their criticisms, either because they objectively believe that the system doesn't have a chance or, and this is probably the main reason, they don't like Tommy or the Amico fan base and they just like being a contrarian. Tommy also has had the advantage of watching the Atari VCS get torn apart by critics and he pretty much did the exact opposite of what they did in the social media landscape and also he avoided crowdfunding as a method of raising money. The Amico is instead funded traditionally by investors and money from $100 refundable deposits that come from pre-orders. And I do want to point out too that it hasn't always been sunshine and rainbows for Tommy and the Amico. Tommy did have a very public spat with Pat Contry of the CU podcast. And when you have two strong headed Italianos with differing opinions, things tend to get ugly. And the back and forth between Tommy Tallarico and Contry has really put a blemish on the Amico, but it has cooled down since then. Pat still does make unprompted digs from time to time, and when he does have something substantial to talk about, he definitely goes hard into the paint and his bias really shows. But it looks like Tommy has moved on from it, focusing his energy on people who are actually open to hearing what he has to say about the console. And you would think that Pat's disdain for the Amico has hurt its public perception, but really only among people who already didn't like it. I mean, Pat has an engaged audience, but they are really mostly focused around retro and collecting topics. And the Venn diagram of people who listen to the CU podcast and actually want to buy an Amico are almost two separate circles. Tommy giving a face to the Amico makes it really hard to make unchecked comments about the system and he's pretty quick to call out inaccuracies or clarify concerns or answer questions and in fact he's probably lurking in the comments of this very video ready to correct any mistakes that I've stated. So hi Tommy. Now let's talk about games because this has been the main criticism of both systems for a while now. People ask, what about the games? You can't have a successful system without games. And they're right. 
The Atari VCS currently has 13 games as of the recording of this video, and a lot of them are exclusive to the platform, at least for a limited time. The VCS also includes the Atari Vault, which includes 20 classic arcade titles and 100 console titles and the option to buy Volume 2. And also they have the option to download Antstream Arcade and Air Console, which are Netflix style services offering a variety of games. Now the Intellivision, they have games also, and but they're mostly reimagined games from the Intellivision era like Astro Smash, Missile Command and Cornhole, and they also have Earthworm Jim planned as well. And there are six games that will be included with the system free of charge, which is a plus over the VCS, which only included the vault. Assuming that they are all new games and not just a repackaged bundle that you can get on Steam, I'd say that the Amico has the upper hand here. Time will tell how many games are offered after the initial launch window, which will keep these systems interesting and relevant. And Atari really does seem to be working towards filling out their game store prior to its retail launch in March and beyond. And the Amico potentially seeing delays, it will give them some time to showcase more of their games and also really focus on showcasing that special controller that the Amico has. Of course, if you want, you can just install Windows on the Atari VCS and put whatever you want on it, bypassing the OS altogether. So if all they include is 13 games and roll up shop, then you always have a PC. But you can't say that about the Amico, which out of the box, it does seem to be a closed ecosystem with no plans to allow the user to put whatever they want on it whatsoever. So the Atari VCS wins this round. So we talked about release dates, public perception, social media, games. Now, what the question on everybody's mind is though, who are these consoles for? And this is a really interesting conversation to have because at first glance, the Amico and the Atari VCS don't really have anything specific to set them apart from the big three. But both consoles have made it really clear that they're not going to compete with the big three and instead carve out their own markets. But who are these consoles for? Now, I'm not about to sell you on either one of these consoles, at least not for free. But it is pretty apparent, at least from the comments on my videos and what I've been seeing all around, is that it's really tough to sell gamers something that they don't already want to buy. And people will argue that the Atari VCS and the Amico don't offer a lot for their price point. And they're kind of right. $299 will buy you a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox Series S. Two very capable systems with a deep library of games that are available right now. So why buy either of these two? We'll start with the Atari VCS since I actually have the system in my hands for a while now and a lot of people have commented, I can't believe you spent $300 on an Atari emulator. Well, it does other things. The VCS is there for people who want a stylish, compact PC that they can use in the living room. They can cruise the web with a built-in Chrome browser, play classic games, play new games, slap Linux or Windows on it, and make it a compact Steam box. The system has a lot of flexibility if you have the patience and creativity to do so. And as a novice computer person, making the VCS do what I want it to do has been really fulfilling and got me thinking about what I want to do with the system in the future. Now, while the VCS can't run the latest games at 4K HDR at 60 frames per second, the system is very capable as a jack of all trades system, but the real selling point is its unique style. Also, the VCS promises to be the first crypto gaming system on the market, which has a lot of people pretty excited. And sure, you can build a cheaper machine or get used parts, but look at it. Can you build a system that looks like this with a real wood veneer? I didn't think so. Now, the Amico, on the other hand, their use case isn't open to as much interpretation as the Atari VCS. Tommy has stated that the games on the Amico will be exclusive. So if you want to play these games, you're going to need an Amico. The unique controller is also a selling point as well. But you, fellow gamer, you don't like unique controls. The controller was perfected when the Xbox 360 was released and refined ever since. So if you're not interested in the Amico, who is? Well, 
it's families. And I know that really sounds goofy, given that the Nintendo Switch has Mario and family-friendly games, but there are still a number of people who don't own any gaming console and really don't have any interest in purchasing the major three systems. And speaking anecdotally, my cousins, they don't have video game systems and they spend a lot of time together, so having something that they can pick up and play at the same time would probably be pretty interesting to them. And also knowing that there aren't any objectionable games allowed on the system is a really selling point as well. And it's a very, very, very niche market that they're targeting, much more narrow than the Atari VCS, but there is a market nonetheless. And if pre-orders are to be believed, there's a number of them interested in buying the system without even playing it, and that can only grow through word of mouth. Changing gears to the VCS and speaking from experience on that video, there are people genuinely interested in this system. I still get a lot of goobers saying that the system is a piece of junk, but those are very few and far between. And like I said, gamers don't like to be sold something that they're not interested in buying. So with all that out of the way, who has the most to lose? And I'm pretty sure that it's Tommy that has the most to lose. The Atari VCS was written off from its very start. The bar was so low for that console and it barely made it over. And there's nowhere for the console to go but up. And the Amico on the other hand has a lot more to lose because they've been working towards building a market of family gamers who feel that the Nintendo Switch doesn't do enough to curate quality games for families. And that's really going to be an incredible uphill battle to get people to buy a gaming console that have never bought a gaming console before. Tommy has built up a lot of faith in the Amico among people who haven't even played it yet. And he's built up a coalition of small YouTubers who are all in on the Amico, regardless of what we currently know about it. And I mean, it kind of worked for me. I did back this system. I got the Founders Edition locked and loaded, and I've also been playing the Intellivision since I was a kid. I still have my dad's system. And the reason why I bought the Amico is the same reason why I bought the Atari VCS. I'm a collector, and they had a collector's version. 2,600 Amicos individually signed by Tommy Tallarico. And also, I can make a video on it. I mean, will it be as successful as my Atari VCS video? Maybe, but my Atari stuff always seems to outperform the Amico stuff every time. But when I do get the system, I'll give it a fair shake, just as I did with the Atari VCS. And I really think it's safe to say that I've built up a reputation of ensuring that I'm approaching things pragmatically. Now, ultimately, the Amico is just an idea until it hits retail, and people are really quick to point that out whenever it gets criticized, but they don't take their own advice when they hype the system up. And I do have some valid concerns about the Amico based off of what I've seen so far, but it usually gets dismissed because I'm not the target demographic for the system, or we still have a lot of people that are excited about the system. And that's really a lazy answer if we're being honest. I bought the console and the concerns that I have are valid and not concern trolling. So even if a handful of people are the only ones asking, I really should have those addressed instead of being blatantly dismissed. It's really kind of insulting. That being said, the Atari VCS is going to have a significantly harder time trying to stay relevant beyond its initial launch. And for the criticisms that people lob at the Amico, at least that has a hook and a purpose among the gaming landscape. The Atari VCS is much more of a computer than a console, and at least in the United States, there isn't a large market for PCs that fit in your living room, and there are several cheaper alternatives available. So, I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Did you buy an Atari VCS or Amico? Do you have plans to pre-order one? If you backed the VCS, did it provide a satisfactory experience? And if you're an Amico fan, what has you most excited for the system? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, give it a like and share it with anybody who might find it interesting. And if you're new here, check out all my other videos about the Amico and the VCS, ranging from my first impressions video of the Atari VCS to my interview with Tommy Tellerico. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing for future content. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.